I've been looking at films since the age of four in 1938. And every once in a while, it's a privilege to be able to experience the work of a filmmaker with a very personal and a very private vision of how to blend image and sound. And I have to say, Alex Tuchinsky's short subject, Gold, to me is an astonishing work of art. Visually, the contrast of still and moving images of an old ghost town, the majesty of sequoia trees lunging to the sky, the image of a little cat silently witnessing all of this, cameras that cant and tilt and swirl, uh, all blended miraculously in rhythm and in mood as well with Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, Fourth Movement of all things. I think Gold is a seven-minute masterpiece. It's just a joyous film and it shows what Alex can do. This is a remarkably gifted young man who deserves and I'm certain will have a distinguished career in film. And I'm honored to be able to say this on camera about him. Gold is simply a masterpiece. The short film Gold that premieres in Berlin in July 2015 has an interesting story behind it. Basically, I wanted to do a choreography of static objects that move due to camera movement and editing. It's quite influenced by the early works of my friend and mentor Hugo Niebeling and in this film I took a piece by Beethoven, the fourth movement of the seventh symphony that was famously called The Apotheosis of Dance by Richard Wagner and I feel that this music is very very lively and very much invites motion. In the music the different themes already express certain movements I try to duplicate the movements that I see in my inner eye when I listen to the music into the camera moves you see in the film. locations I chose the desert where we found abandoned gold mining equipment plus I filmed sequoia trees which are among the world's greatest and oldest trees as a contrast. We see how nature conquers the remains of human civilization in the desert and the conquest happens due to the editing which juxtaposes trees and the desert and editing took quite a while. And during filming we had a lot of happy little accidents, so to say. So we found a cat lying in the shadow, which fit perfectly in one moment of the film. And one day it was raining in the desert, which formed a beautiful contrast to the sunlight. And I used the rainy shots in a few segments where the music is more stormy, so to say. I myself consider this one of my most important works so far, especially when it comes to the filmmaking side. In my other films I try to influence the viewer by a story, while in this film it's pure editing and cinematography. It's the pure art of filmmaking, not so much the story that's transported, but more the style. I filmed the film solely with a handheld camera, with very very little time. I chose the handheld look because I had to take so many shots in such a short amount of time that we just couldn't even bring a tripod with us and set it up. Often we just stood at an unstable spot. I quickly filmed and we moved to the next spot. Sometimes we almost fell down a hill because it was so slidey, so slippery. When I filmed the sequoia trees, there was snow that was maybe one and a half meters thick in parts. I remember I once fell down one meter of snow, which was quite an interesting experience. I actually have this on camera, but didn't put it into the film. Probably I'll put it into the next work. In the desert, we found a lot of small animals. I filmed them, we found a lot of flowers, a lot of stuff. 
and we moved so much, I think we walked about 15 kilometers that day or 20 kilometers that day, it was crazy. We were moving like crazy and afterwards we felt totally exhausted, but I hope that the images are worth it. If you were a mean 1930s Soviet political censorship functionary, you might call this film a little formalistic exercise that puts style over substance. But I'm quite content with this. I'm looking forward to hearing your comments.